reproduction in human beings. We have already studied the different modes of reproduction in unicellular organisms and plants. Let us now study the mode. In human beings, the males and females are different, with different organs performing a specific function. For example, special reproductive organs to produce sperms and eggs. Human beings can only reproduce after reaching sexual maturity. So, let us discuss about the age at which a person begins to mature sexually, the changes that occur in the body after sexual maturation, and the causes of these changes. We all undergo many changes from the time we are born. Our height and weight increases. We acquire milk feet and even lose them. We again acquire a permanent set of feet. These all changes can be considered under the general process of growth. But there are a whole new set of changes during the early teenage. The appearance of the body changes, new features start developing and so do the new sensations. Some of these changes are common to both boys and girls. Growth of thick hair on the armpits and in the genital areas can be noticed. The genital area, that is, the area between the thighs grows darker. Development of thin hair can be seen on hands, legs and even on face. The skin becomes oily and is prone to develop pimples. There are few set of changes that are not common in both boys and girls. In girls, breast size increases with darkening of the skin of the nipples at the tips of breast. Girls start menstruating at around this time. Boys develop thick hair growth on face and their voice becomes hoarse. All these changes take place over a period of months or even years. The changes do not happen all at the same time in one person, nor do they happen at an exact age. Some people acquire these changes too early, while in others they happen very slowly. Similarly, each change does not occur or become quickly. All these changes are the aspects of the body depicting sexual maturity. Do you know why does the body start developing these characters at a particular age? In multicellular organisms, specialized cells perform specific functions. Plants develop special cells and tissues to carry out the process of fertilization. Similarly, humans develop specialized tissues and germ cells to participate in sexual reproduction. After crossing the age of 10 or 11 years, there are sudden noticeable changes in the growth pattern. The body begins to undergo rapid changes leading to reproductive maturity. The period of life when the body undergoes these changes is called adolescence. The age of adolescence varies greatly from person to person. It begins around the age of 11 and lasts up to 18 or 19 years of age. As this period covers the teens, adolescents are also called teenagers. Adolescence in girls begins one or two years earlier than the boys. Adolescence ends at adulthood. The changes that take place during adolescence mark the onset of puberty. The period of life when the body becomes capable of reproduction is known as puberty. It normally starts at 12 to 14 years in boys and 10 to 12 years in girls and varies from person to person. 
several changes occur in the body during puberty. These changes do not occur instantaneously. It takes many years for the body to undergo these changes. Puberty ends when an adolescent reaches reproductive maturity. How are all these changes related to the process of reproduction in humans? The sexual reproduction means fusion of two germ cells from each individual to form a zygote. This can happen either by release of germ cells from the body of an individual externally as in case of flowering plants or it can happen by internal transfer of germ cells for the fusion as in case of many animals. Humans can undergo the process of sexual reproduction only after attaining sexual maturity. Thus, the changes that take place during the puberty are the signals that sexual maturation is taking place. On the other hand, the actual transfer of germ cells or gametes between two individuals requires special organs for the act. For example, in case of humans, males and females have specialized organs to carry out this process. In humans, the male discharges the sperm inside the body of the female. The sperm fuses with the ovum released from the female reproductive system to form a zygote. This zygote grows and develops inside the body of the female. The female reproductive organs and breasts need to mature to accommodate the changes occurring in the body. Let us now study about the systems involved in the process of reproduction in humans. Male reproductive system The main reproductive organs of the male reproductive system are a pair of testes and penis. The other male reproductive organs are scrotum, epididymis, sperm ducts or vas deferens, seminal vesicles, prostrate gland and urethra. Testes are the oval shaped organs that lie outside the abdominal cavity of a man. They are enclosed in a small, thin, walled, muscular pouch called scrotum or scrotal sac that lie outside the abdominal cavity. Testes function efficiently at a temperature slightly below the body temperature. Hence, they are held outside the abdominal cavity and in the scrotal sac so as to provide an optimal temperature for the storage of sperms. The function of the testes is to produce the germ cells or male gametes called sperms. The formation of germ cells or sperms in man begins at puberty and continues throughout his life. Testes also secrete the male hormone testosterone. This hormone brings about changes like deeper voice, growth of thicker hair on the face in boys during puberty. The process of sperm formation is known as spermatogenesis. Each sperm is a single cell and small in size containing all the usual cell components. Testis produces millions of sperms. The immature sperms formed in testes travel into a coiled tube called epididymis. The sperms get matured and get stored temporarily in this long coiled tube. From epididymis, the sperms are carried to urethra through a long tube called vas deferens or the sperm duct. The urethra forms a common passage for both sperms and urine. Urethra carries sperms to penis, which opens outside the body. Penis is the organ of the reproductive system that delivers the sperms at the site of fertilization. 
Along the path of vast deference, prostrate gland and seminal vesicles secrete their secretions. These secretions make the transport of sperms easy and also provides nourishment. Each sperm is composed of three parts, a head, a middle piece and a tail. The head part of the sperm consists of the genetic material. Sperms are motile and are able to move independently in the fluid medium because of the tail. They move towards the egg or female germ cell. Sperms can survive for a period of 24 to 72 hours in the female reproductive system and later die and degenerate. Female Reproductive System Ovaries, oviduct, uterus and vagina are the main reproductive organs of a female reproductive system. Ovaries are two oval shaped organs present inside the abdominal cavity of a woman's body. The function of ovaries is to produce eggs or ova. The process of formation of an egg cell is called oogenesis. Ovaries also secrete a hormone called estrogen, which brings about changes like feminine voice, development of mammary glands in girls during puberty. When a girl is born, the ovaries already contain thousands of eggs. These eggs are immature and remain inactive till maturity. On reaching puberty, some of these eggs start maturing. The mature egg is released from the ovary. This process is called ovulation. The egg released from the ovary goes into the oviduct or fallopian tube. The oviduct or fallopian tubes are tubes with funnel shaped openings which cover the ovaries. The fertilization of an egg with the sperms takes place in oviduct. The oviducts connect to a bag like structure called the uterus or womb. Uterus is a muscular organ. The growth and development of the fertilized egg takes place in the uterus. Due to strong muscles and its ability to expand and contract, the uterus can accommodate a growing baby. The uterus is connected to the vagina through a narrow muscular opening called the cervix. The vagina is a muscular tube-like structure that leads from the uterus and opens outside of the body. The vagina is the part that receives the male penis and forms the pathway through which sperms enter into the female's body. It is through the same pathway a baby comes out of a woman's body during childbirth after the completion of development inside the uterus. This is why the vagina is also called the birth canal. In females, one egg is released from one of the ovaries into the oviduct every month. When the egg is released from the ovary, the inner walls of the uterus start to become thicker. The thick linings of the uterus are richly supplied with blood to nourish the growing embryo. The sperms actively swim and travel upwards through the cervix into the uterus to the oviduct of the female reproductive system. A single sperm mates with the egg in the oviduct and fertilization takes place. During fertilization, the nucleus of the sperm fuses with nucleus of the egg to form a single nucleus. This fertilized egg is called zygote. The zygote begins to divide into many cells and moves towards the uterus. This developing zygote is called embryo. The embryo moves down from the oviduct into the uterus and gets in 
and a soft and thick lining of the uterus. This is called implantation. When the embryo gets implanted into the uterus, the woman is said to be pregnant. The development of embryo takes place inside the uterus. As the embryo develops, it encloses itself within a thin lining called amnion. The amnion is filled with a watery liquid called amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid acts as a shock absorber and prevents the embryo from physical damage by jerks or mechanical shocks. It also restricts the movement of the embryo. Gradually, the embryo develops and starts resembling the human form. The unborn baby at a stage when all its body parts can be identified is called a fetus. The fetus gets all the nutrients and oxygen from its mother's blood. The fetus is attached to the uterus by a special structure called placenta. Placenta is a disc-like structure which is embedded in the uterine wall. It contains villi which are present on the embryo's side. On the mother's side, blood spaces are present which are surrounded by villi. This provides large surface area for the transport of materials like glucose and oxygen from the mother's body to embryo. Attached to the navel of the fetus is a flexible tube called umbilical cord. Umbilical cord runs from fetus to the walls of the uterus and is richly supplied with blood vessels. The umbilical cord connects the fetus to the mother's circulatory system. The mother's blood does not get mixed with the blood of the fetus. However, this connection supplies oxygen and food substances to the fetus. Waste substances like carbon dioxide diffuse across the placenta from the fetus through the mother's circulatory system. It takes about 38 weeks or 9 months for a fetus to develop from the fertilized egg. During pregnancy, the fetus is fully dependent on the mother for its nourishment and growth. Thus, the mother must take adequate food rich in nutrients to meet the needs of the developing baby. The body of mother excretes waste, breathes for it, keeps it warm, and also protects it from any damage and disease. When the development of fetus is complete, the mother gives birth to the baby. The fully formed baby comes out from the mother's body through vagina. The newborn baby completely depends on its mother and feeds on her milk. The child is born as a result of rhythmic contractions of the muscles in the uterus. Have you ever wondered what would happen if the egg released from one of the ovaries does not fertilize with the sperm? If the egg does not fertilize with sperm, the inner lining of the uterus starts shedding. The egg, the thickened lining of the uterus along with blood vessels and other uterine tissues is shed off as blood and mucus. This results in bleeding from the vagina in women. This is called menstruation. Menstruation lasts for about 5 to 8 days. Menstruation occurs once in about 28 to 30 days because ovulation occurs every 28 days. Reproductive health The population of our country is increasing rapidly day by day. There is a very strong relation between high national fertility rate and measures of poverty. As the population density increases, per capita income decreases, followed by the depletion of natural resources. It creates an economical burden on the nation. General health also goes down. 
large families not only affect individual but also community life. Economic pressure, mother's poor health, children neglected at home, poor housing, malnutrition, insufficient medical care, lack of better education are some of the disadvantages of a large family. A small family is advantages to the individual as well as to the nation and ultimately to the entire human race. Family planning can be done by practicing birth control measures. Birth control can be either by preventing pregnancy in females or by adopting a method by which the sperms produced are prevented from fertilizing the ovum. All birth control methods can be broadly classified into three categories, namely the barrier methods, chemical methods, and the surgical methods. Let us discuss all these methods of contraception in brief. Barrier methods. Barrier methods of preventing pregnancy involves the use of physical devices such as condoms and diaphragms. Males use condoms as a covering on the penis while the females use diaphragms to cover the cervix. Condoms as well as diaphragms act as a barrier and prevent the sperms from meeting the ovum and fertilizing it. Chemical methods Chemical methods of preventing pregnancy involves the use of pills. The females use two types of pills, namely oral pills and vaginal pills. The oral pills, also called as oral contraceptives, which contain hormones or chemical substances which stop the ovaries from releasing ovum into the oviduct. The vaginal pills, on the other hand, contain chemicals called spermicides which kill the sperms. It is necessary that the pills are consumed at the appropriate time to avoid hormonal imbalance in the body. Intrauterine Contraceptive Device IUCD The use of intrauterine contraceptive devices like the loop and copper tea is very effective in preventing pregnancy. A copper tea is placed inside the uterus. It prevents the implantation of fertilized egg in the uterus. However, these devices can cause side effects due to the irrigation caused in uterus. Surgical methods Surgical methods of contraception are available for both males and females. For males, small portion of the sperm duct or vas deferens is removed by surgery and both the cut ends are tied properly. This prevents the sperms from coming out. This surgical procedure carried out in males is called vasectomy. In females, a small portion of the oviducts are removed by surgery and the cut ends are tied properly. This prevents the ovum from entering into the oviduct. This surgical operation carried out in females is called tubectomy. Thus, surgical methods can be used to create such blocks. Surgical methods are safe in the long run but the process of surgery can cause infections and other problems if not performed properly. Surgical method can also be used for removal of unwanted pregnancies. However, these methods of surgery can be misused by people who do not want a particular child. This results in illegal sex selective abortion of female fetuses. For a healthy society, the sex ratio of males and females needs to be maintained. Due to reckless killing of female fetuses, 
child sex ratio is declining at an alarming rate in some sections of our society. These practices of determining sex and abortion of fetus is prohibited by the law. Another problem related to human reproduction is the spread of sexually transmitted diseases, that is, STDs. Syphilis, gonorrhea, AIDS are some common sexually transmitted diseases which affect sexual health of human beings. Sexually transmitted diseases spread from an infected person to a healthy person by sexual contact. Sex education and indefinite preventive measures are necessary to protect individuals from these sexually transmitted diseases. Let's do a quick check.